Welcome back. Well, the pre-opening rates are going to kick in in, I think, just a minute from now. And it's going to be a good opening for the market. The SGX Nifty is on, was on fire, up about 92 points right now. Anuj is here to talk about that. The other person who was on fire yesterday was Messi. Anuj, <laughs> big game today, France-Morocco. Absolutely. And I think today is uh, the best strategy is to go to sleep at 3.30, then wake up. Uh, uh, because today is going to be a big day. Uh, the Fed outcome will be there and then Jeremy Powell's statement. And if you manage to stay till uh, up till 11, 30, 12, might as well extend yourself and watch the 12, 30 game. But for that, please ensure that you have a good sleep before that. So, 4 to 8 uh, perhaps would be a good time to sleep uh, uh, and then, you know, prepare for it. Uh, and I tell you what, today is going to be the big day in market. In fact, between today and tomorrow, you, I dare say, is the biggest day of this calendar. Because this Fed meet is not just about the outcome, but it also is about the next three months uh, uh, sort of outlook uh, for 2023. So in that sense, it's very important. But the global market is showing some signs of profit taking. In fact, if you look at the Dow yesterday, it had a massive 800 point green bar first up and then just one way red bars. And the market actually closed at low point of the day. So technically yesterday, the bears would have made money. And the focus clearly might now start to shift from inflation, which could be seen as 2022's problem to recession which could be 2023's problem. So I think that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, traders will, of course, want to take some positions between 3 to 3.30 today, preempting the Fed move. But I think if you look at the Nifty, it's set to open in the profit-taking zone. 18.670 to 18.700 is a zone in which the Nifty has failed three times already in December. Uh, three times the high has been somewhere around 18.670. So again, not a good zone to actually uh, make fresh entry. Uh, it's not a zone in which risk reward is in your favor. Keep an eye on the IT index. Uh, the rally yesterday has taken it to between 20 and 50-day moving average. So that's something to keep an eye on. But on the nifty, my sense is if you again fail at 1870, then perhaps 18490 becomes again a level to watch out for because that's been the range for the market. On the bank nifty, it opens straight away at that uh, uh, target of 44,000. I think going by the options data, 44,150 could be the zone where there could be some profit taking. It remains the strongest index, uh, like we have been mentioning so many times. But again, what would be a good zone? I mean, if you have a reaction, perhaps to 43,800, uh, that's the kind of dip uh, that you know traders normally buy. Uh, but uh, clearly, it's been the strongest index. But today, you might see some profit taking because you stayed away open in that zone of 44,000 to 44,150 or so. Okay, Anuj, thanks a lot for that. So, uh, that's on the markets, but the pre-opening rates are just about kicking in. So, let's get some first rates in. The Nifty is indicating a start of almost about 68 odd points. So, up in the green. The big movers, Infosys is up almost about a percent. Bajaj Finance, ICICI Bank. So, look, looks like it's a secular move on the upside that we'll, uh, you know, brace ourselves for this morning. A couple of other names, Divi's, Nestle India, Tech Mahindra are also in the green. And on the downside, a few and far between really, Titan, HCL Tech, Reliance, but we'll wait by for these rates to settle. There's a bit of an appreciation on the rupee as well. So 82.60 is where the rupee has opened. Uh, I think the close yesterday was 82.80, so a bit of an appreciation over there. And in the broader markets, all eyes will definitely be on Paytm and the response posted 850 crore buyback. Uh, so do track that uh, as well. Let me draw your attention also to the banks because there is uh, once again a big move in pre-opening, whether it's UCO, Central Bank, Bank of Maharashtra. So that clearly uh, is the space to be these days. You know, the other uh, sort of uh, thing to focus on is public sector banks, right? Because uh, that has been such a large mover. And the simple question on what we are trying to answer on uh, Market Laser today is, is the best done for public sector banks? Now, uh, you know, you can use various uh, sort of methods to look at this. You can look at, you know, just the price action, uh, momentum fading, et cetera, et cetera. But what we're doing here is uh, just looking at valuations. Where are one year forward price to book valuations now as compared to the peak price to book valuations for, you know, a group of, say, eight public sector banks, the most well-traded public sector banks. Actually, I've included most of the constituents of the Nifty PSU Bank Index, maybe except a Yuko, a Punjab and Singh, where data is not available. So uh, I'm going to divide this into two sets, right? Uh, so these, this, uh, the first graphic on your screen is where uh, PSU banks are already at their previous peak price to book multiples. Uh, I'll get to the uh, sort of you know peak uh, the, uh, as well. That's the data set. So SBI uh, from a low of 0 0.5 times price to book is now at 1.55 times price to book. The peak was 1.57 times in, uh, let's just go back to the uh, uh, sort of the previous graphic. Uh, the previous peak was in January of 2022. Let's just have the uh, current at the peak. Yeah, that's the one. Canara Bank, 
uh, from a low of 0.2 times price to book uh, is now at 0.8 times price to book. Uh, the peak, the previous peak was in December of 2012, all the way back, right? So it's almost there. Bank of Baroda is the next one from 0.2 times, uh, which was the low in 2020. It's rallied to 0.99 times. This is all data as of yesterday's close. The peak was 1.1 time. So again, you know, 1, 1 1.1, not very much uh, to go. If you just look at this, this is one year forward price to book. Uh, by the way, for BOB, the peak was made in November of 2014. And you look at Union Bank, again, similar kind of data. We're at 0 0.8 uh, and the peak was 0 0.87 times, uh, which was made in December of 2012. So I'm not saying, well, the rally for these four stocks is done and dusted, but you need to be mindful of valuations as well. And for these four names, at least, valuations are uh, basically back at where they were in the previous cycle. Now, let's come to uh, just two other names where there is still distance uh, between where uh, the current multiples are and the peak multiples were. So the two names are PNB and Bank of India. There you go. That's the, uh, that's the graphic. For PNB, from a low of 0 0.3 times price to book, we've come up all the way uh, to uh, 0 0.66. Uh, that graphic is incorrect. The current multiple for PNB is 0 0.66 times pr uh, price to book. The peak was 1.03 times, uh, which was made in October of 2017. So for PNB, uh, you know, there is still a fair distance to go from 0 0.6 to all the way to 1. Uh, and for Bank of India, we're at 0 0.7 times price to book, and the high, which was made in January of 2013, was 0.86 odd times. So, you know, the point is, for two names, uh, for PNB and Bank of India, just going by where valuation multiples on a one-year forward basis are, there is perhaps some distance uh, to go. Uh, I think that is the, uh, the PNB and the Bank of Baroda uh, data. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, you know, so, uh, you know, the point is, th there are a few things which have happened, right, for PSU banks. 2012, if you look at the peak multiples, broadly, they were all between 2012 and 2014. Right after 2012, 2013, this entire NPA ballooning cycle started, right? It went on, NPS kept rising for the entire PSU bank space. They peaked sometime in 2019. And after that, you had a situation where government refinanced these banks by putting in capital. There were mergers which happened, etc. And now you are at a point where uh, things are looking much better. You actually have PSU banks coming on and saying that the corporate book is well under control. Growth is coming in from the retail sector. Uh, so the imponderable at this point, because this is just based on where peak pre previous multiples were, is can mul valuation multiples themselves expand? Uh, and I think that is, uh, uh, you know, that is something which we will only be wiser about in hindsight. But as of now, I think this is the data if you go back and look at the previous cycles. Two banks, PNB and Bank of India, I think on my radar, where there is still uh, room to head compared to where they were earlier. Sonia. Okay, well, uh, th thanks a lot for that. We'll, of course, uh, get more views coming in on the banking space. But in the meantime, the other stock that we're discussing this morning is Paytm. The board has approved an 850 crore buyback with a maximum price of 810 rupees a share. Digan Tharia, the co-founder at Green Edge Wealth, joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Digan, the buyback amount may come as a bit of a disappointment to some on the street. But the larger question is, now the street will move on to whether the company can deliver in terms of earnings and growth, right? In that context, what is your view? And also a quick comment on the buyback. Yeah, thanks, Vinaya, for having us here in the show. Uh, see, firstly, uh, you know, all these years, we've learned that, you know, company does a buyback or a dividend when, you know, they have a lot of cash and they don't need all that cash, uh, you know, for use in the business. And, you know, these cash has been generated from the profits in the business. Uh, you know, here, this buyback seems a little more surprising because the cash that will be used in this buyback, uh, you know, they got this cash from the IPO. The company has never made a cash profit. Uh, in fact, it has made a very huge cash loss at the operating level. Uh, you know, they, they wrote it, you know, some people are trying to draw conclusions that Paytm is doing this buyback because it is very confident that it will break EBITDA, you know, it will break even at the EBITDA level X of ESOPs in September 23. Now, you know, so many conditions are there that, you know, because I'm going to make some uh, profit, you know, small operating profits in 23, why do I go and do a buyback today? So I think the purpose of the buyback is not very clear, uh, you know, and it will end up confusing a lot of investors who would not, uh, you know, have seen the history. You know, we saw that 
when the Reliance Power IPO failed. Uh, you know, they announced a bonus issue in 2007-8, but that does not help the stock because, you know, end of the day, you have to make profits and then use that profits to reward shareholders. So the amount, I think it's good that they're only spending 850 crores, Sonia, because, uh, you know, we all were thinking, oh, 9,000 crores cash is there, so at least that much protection is there. You know, now 1,000 crores straight away goes out of that 9,000 crores. And, and you know, if the business model does not turn into the profit, slowly, slowly, this cash is going to be eaten up by the business. So I think uh, it's not very clear why they should go for a buyback. Uh, it, it's very strange rather they should, uh, you know, spend 1,000 crores here uh, rather than, uh, you know, trying to get into some profitability using this cash. So, Digant, would you say that this Paytm event, the buyback, is actually a non-event? Because as you said, right, had they spent a lot of money on the buyback, again, question marks would be raised that why are you using the IPO proceeds uh, when you're not generating cash, right? Why are you using the money to go in for a larger buyback? If you do a little bit less, this, then you would say that, oh, the size of the buyback is underwhelming. You know, so you can argue both ways, right, as a Paytm uh, you know, shareholder. But on the whole, would you say that this is a non-event from a stock, uh, you know, point of view? Yeah, yeah I think it's a non-event. Uh, you know, I would say it's slightly negative because, uh, you know, like the cash is being used, like, you know, 1,000 crores straight or it goes away from the valuation. That, you know, hardly it matters on the overall market cap. And see, this is an open market buyback. And we have seen that in the past, a lot of these mm -hmm. buybacks have not you know, they have not been able to buy back those number of shares in the stipulated time period. So they may not end up doing that whole buyback also. So I think it's quite a non-event, uh, you know, it should be ignored. Paytm investors should just focus on, you know, whether at this market cap and this price, is there hope to make money in the future? Uh, you know, the answer is very, uh, you know, resounding no, that it's not very clear because, uh, you know, they are touting BNPL and loans as their next profitability driver. I think they have a lot of hurdles to cross, you know, the RBI, the regulatory comfort on the way they lend, the way they give guarantees to the banking partners. So I don't think I'll take things for granted, you know, for something that will happen in 26, 27, this company will be hugely profitable. I don't want to pay so much today. Mm. So I think uh, we have to look at this stock irrespective of the buyback. And if I look at the stock irrespective of the buyback, there are a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of challenges ahead, uh, you know, so this valuation is not very cheap. Mm. And, you know, the investors should be very careful on just buying the shares for the sake of buyback. Uh, Digant, I, th I remember last time, I think you mentioned this now also, and correct me if I'm wrong, you mentioned uh, Bajaj Finance is a better option, right? Uh, th this year is one of those few rare years where Bajaj Finance, if it uh, stays here, will end lower for the year, I think. Uh, under Underperformer. Uh, uh, yeah. Go good price uh, to buy? Uh, see, Bajaj Finance, uh, see, in the last decade, you know, all these banks used to grow at 12-14%, Bajaj mm -hmm. Finance used to grow at 40%. So that high valuation work Bajaj was commanding was because there was a very high growth differential of Bajaj Finance versus the rest of the banks. Mm -hmm. Now, today you have large banks like HDFC, ICIC, Axis growing at 20%, maybe 20% plus, and Bajaj's growth rate has come down from those 40% days to 30%. So I think some more time-wise derating of Bajaj Finance is bound to happen. Uh, I don't see this stock, uh, you know, making new highs anytime soon. Uh, I think Bajaj Finance has become very large. We all have to accept that, you know, 25% to 30% may now be the new number. Mm. And, and, you know, the segment which Bajaj Finance lends to, which is, you know, not the top one crore families, but the next five crore families, that segment itself is under a bit of stress. So mm. I think Bajaj Finance best left for time correction. Uh, maybe if it corrects a lot, of, you know, some long-term investors may buy, but otherwise I think Bajaj is in for some bit of time correction. Okay, all right, Digant, uh, thanks a lot for your quick take on uh, Paytm. So the street has moved on and now they will look towards earnings. In that context, the EBITDA losses have narrowed uh, for the company, but let's see what the way forward is. Uh, Mitesh is with us to give us a quick call at 9.10. Mitesh, what's the view? I, in fact, have Bajaj Finance as my call. <clears throat> okay. uh, keep a stop below 65.80, look for 67.20 as the first target. Eventually, 6800 could be tested. Okay, Bajaj Finance. Sudarshan, what about you? ONGC is a buy with a stock under 140. ONGC, all right. Uh, yes, Bank is another stock on our Momentumizer list this morning. Mangalam is here to give us more. Mangalam. Well, the momentum behind Yes Bank has been extremely strong. In fact, all of this week itself, it's up 22%. And this week has had just two trading sessions so far. This month, it's up 40%. And this year, it's up 75%. 
How does Yes Bank compare with the Nifty Bank? Well, the Nifty Bank is up just 24% this year as against the uh, Yes Bank stock, which is 75% higher. But Yes Bank is, uh, you know, in line with the Nifty PSU Bank Index, which is up by almost 78-odd percent. What really startled me was the delivery volumes of the last three trading sessions. On an average, the last three trading sessions, the delivery volumes have been upwards of 20 crore shares. And that's a massive uh, beat as against, you know, the last three months average daily delivery volumes, which have been just at around that three crore shares itself. So what's happening in the company is something that we need to track. But fundamentally, there are a few concerns. We have Morgan Stanley saying that they've initiated coverage with an underweight rating at a target price of 20 rupees. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Mangalam. Right on time. The first tick on the index is in the green, up almost about 40-odd points. 50 points actually now on the index. Uh, the mid-cap index is up almost about half odd percent. And you have big moves coming into names like Hindalco. Uh, there's Vipro, which is up seven-tenths of a percent. There's Startup Motors, Bajaj Finance, Apollo Hospitals. And some of the IT names, Tech Mahindra, Infosys are well in the green as well. On the downside, very few stocks actually. Titan, Axis Bank, Nestle India, just flat with a bit of a negative bias. But otherwise, it's a very good opening for the market. The Nifty is now above 18,660. So do keep an eye out on that. And let me also uh, get your attention to the Sensex, which is now up almost about 200 odd points. Uh, we've been talking about key levels to watch. The 20 DMA, of course, has been scaled on the upside. 18,514 is the 20 DMA. So the Nifty is well above that. The Nifty Bank, once again, is opened at a record high. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a good opening. No two ways about that. Um, in the broader markets as well, just wanted to take a quick look at some stocks. Paytm will top the charts. Let's see how the street is reacting uh, to that. No reaction at all. Uh, I guess the street has just moved on from that 80 crore buyback. And next would be to look at the earnings potential for Paytm. Apart from that, a couple of uh, stocks. Yuko Bank is up almost 10%. You have Punjab and Sindh Bank, that's up 4.5%. Central Bank, IOB, Bank of Maharashtra, the whole lot is up anywhere between, uh, you know, half to about 10 odd percent. So looking pretty good there. The mid-cap index is now flying. So just look at that, 200 points higher on the mid-cap index. Plenty of stocks hitting fresh highs. Uh, we spoke about some of them yesterday, the likes of uh, Polycab, etc. This morning, there's Blue Star, which is at a fresh 52-week high. GE Shipping. Is it a fresh high? Kalpa through power, JK Lakshmi Cement, uh, you have Union Bank, VIP, all sitting at fresh highs. So this is turning out to be a pretty good opening for the market. Mitesh is still with us. Uh, Mitesh, your first comment, the Nifty Bank is now at a record high above 44,000. You were telling us about how there is more momentum on the upside. What would you do here and what are the stocks that you'd watch in the banking space now? So we already have long positions on the Nifty Bank and uh, now would recommend a trading stop loss at 43,840, which is roughly about 150, 160 points lower from here. And 44,400 is the target on the upside. <clears throat> on, the, uh, on, the, on the banking stocks per se, you know, I've been liking HDFC Bank and State Bank of India. Uh, SBI, if you look at the last few days of action, it's not had an hourly close about 620. It's trading right there. So maybe about 624, 625, I think we'll take a buy there as well. And HDFC Bank is something, uh, you know, which... Uh, I think can go further higher. Uh, keep a stop below 1635 here. Look for targets of 1685. Mm. <clears throat> okay, 40 points now, by the way, on the uh, index. And uh, let's just start with uh, just a quick look at the PSU Bank uh, space. You know, the two names <clears throat> which uh, I, I uh, presented some data on PSU names, the two names which uh, were not part of my list, Yuko and PSB, because, I mean, uh, there was not, uh, I couldn't find the data for them. Yuko is up 8%. Uh, it is also, of course, still, I would reckon, one of the cheapest. It was it used to be the most troubled PSU bank. And the other one is Punjab and Sindh, of course, which continues to rally. I think it's up 90% this month. Uh, otherwise, I mean, the bigger ones, Bank of Baroda, Bank of India is down a little bit. Uh, SBI is flat. And we've got uh, Bank of Baroda, Canara Bank, etc., uh, which uh, which is uh, basically starting a little uh, slow uh, at, uh, this, at this point. Uh, so, but the PSU Bank index after yesterday's three and a half percent move is up uh, another uh, what uh, three quarters of a percent or so, zero point six. It's coming off a little bit, uh, but we'll see uh, what uh, happens. But you know, in the uh, in the other uh, banking uh, banking space, I mean, AU Bank. Uh, this is uh, Bank Nifty constituents, IDFC first. Banks are the stronger part of the market, so makes sense to look here. Federal as Kotak Bank, etc., starting I mean mildly higher. Uh, and of course, the index itself coming off a little bit, tapering off a little bit, 45 odd points. Yeah, Sonia. I just want to point yeah. out on TVS Motor, we actually look at that stock. That stock is in the green and even the volumes are picking up on TVS Motor, at least the last time I checked. 
uh, there you have a half a percent higher. There was a management meet yesterday where they said that over the next 12 quarters, uh, they are going to launch multiple electric vehicles to cover all sub-segments. So they're going very big on the electric vehicle space. And they also spoke about how the TVS iCube is doing extremely well. Um, they're currently selling about 10,000 units per month. They are gunning to sell 25,000 units per month by March of 2023. And if that happens, the IQ would be the number one brand in electric vehicles in the two-wheeler market in India. Uh, UBS has uh, quite an aggressive target price. It's a 1,330 rupee target price. So TVS Motor also in focus this morning. Okay, and buyer crop science is down close to about a percent and a half as the company discontinued operations at its formulation unit plant in Gujarat, Himatnagar. So that stock is lower. Paytm has started sliding. It opened flat, but now it's down close to about 2.5%. But the two sectors which are doing well, one is Nifty Metals, that's up close to about 0.8, And the other one is IT, where the rebound extends itself. So these are the two global-facing sectors, and those are the sectors which are leading the charge. And of course, the rally continues in PSU banks as well. But on the whole, just up close to about 55 odd points on the Nifty. So the gains have faded just a tad bit, but it's a pretty good opening right now. Uh, okay. Just a few other yeah. names. Uh, Colgate yeah. Palmolive is down two and a half. I mean, if we can have uh, that up, 1603 is coming up with volumes as well. Uh, so uh, we uh, that's something uh, I wanted to point out. Mirza International is down 7%. Now, uh, you know, these uh, footwear companies that uh, had a one-way move, uh, that's coming up with a cut. Reddington has a, had a very nice move. It's, uh, it's down 1.5%. Uh, so, so these are some volume-led cuts that we have at this point in the day. And then there are these follow-up moves. I mean, Hudco, for example, went up very sharply yesterday. It's up another 3%. Nagarjuna, I think, ended 5% higher. It's another 4%. It's almost three digits now. That is Nagarjuna Construction Company. Coforge is up about 2.6%. Uh, so you've got all these moves. I mean, Karur Vaisya Bank is up 4%. Uh, and uh, again, only mentioning this because uh, these get, these got these moves of what volumes. Raymond is up 3.6%, uh, has been doing very well over the last few sessions. Uh, Catholic Syrian Bank, CSB Bank ended 7% higher and it's starting another 4% higher. So these are strong moves uh, that uh, we have uh, on our hands, follow through moves from yesterday in the broader markets uh, at this point. I mean, 4 is to 1 advances to declines on the uh, NSC uh, at, uh, right now, right as the word go. Deeraj Agarwal is with us, co head of equities at Ambit Capital. He's joining us to take some questions. Deeraj, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. If I can ask you how you would judge prospects for public sector banks after the very frenzied rally we've seen uh, in that space uh, from here. Go on. So I think uh, banks in general look good. Uh, however, uh, there is there is one uh, bit, of, bit of slight warning that uh, we think should be kept in mind that uh, deposit growth has lagged the lending growth for a while now. And hence, uh, there, there will be an upward pressure of the deposit pricing, uh, which will be much more than the uh, lending rates uh, the probability of lending rates going up by an equal amount, which can put some margin pressure going forward. Uh, it can be visible starting perhaps December quarter results itself, or, or, or if not, certainly by March quarter. Uh, that's one thing which needs to be kept in mind while one does look at banking constructively for the longer term. Okay, looking at banking constructively for the longer term. Uh, Dheeraj, hi, good morning. How are you feeling about the markets on the whole? You know, this is a this has been a really good year for equities. Uh, we are sitting at record highs. And now a lot of the headwinds are behind us, whether it's uh, rate hikes or even a growth slowdown, COVID as well. Uh, do you think the start of the U new year, India will continue to outperform? And if yes, what are the pockets where you still see value and growth headroom now? So uh, finding value is becoming already becoming a little bit tough, right? So uh, uh, we have a very mathematical framework for looking at markets, which is based upon uh, earnings yield, bond yield gap. Uh, the fair value for that works out roughly around the current levels, 18,700. Uh, however, uh, uh, markets in positive sentiment time can actually stretch to, when you know, there is a EYBY mean mean value, there's, if, if you look at the maximum gap it can create, and then maximum level it can possibly go to 20,000, 20,500 range. Uh, anything beyond that, I think, uh, is going to be a little bit of a stretch. So. While a lot of headwinds have receded, uh, possibly a lot of that headwinds receding is already getting reflected in the valuations. So it's trending up. I think uh, it'll be more of a stock bigger market going into next year. Uh, expecting a runaway Nifty is going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of a, of a more optimistic. 
One of the big headwind which has receded has been crude prices, right, and commodities in general, and that provides a good tailwind, at least for the first half of the year. Uh, Dheeraj, morning. Reema here. Um, as you speak to a lot of investors, uh, what is their approach in India versus China? China's reopening, valuations are still very reasonable. Are we going to see a far higher allocation to China, which could come at the expense of India? Is it hard to sell India at these valuations now when you speak to a lot of investors? Yeah, it is a little hard to sell India. In fact, uh, one interesting conundrum investors uh, mention whenever they talk is they're very positive in India, they're very positive in Indian economy, Indian markets over the next five years but they find hard to pick stock ideas. So that's the that, that's a very interesting paradox. You like the markets, but you're not able to convince yourself to buy individual names in the market. So that obviously tells you that uh, it's not the structural outlook, it's not the fundamental outlook, but it's the valuation of the price, uh, which is a little bit of a deterrent at this point. Uh, China people are looking at, China is a strange case. Everybody wants to go there and everybody is scared to go there. So I think the few bolder investors have made a move towards China. Um, but the recent memory of what happened in China and what happened in some of the other emerging markets like Russia, which is uh, where, uh, which are prone to sudden shocks because of uh, regulatory intervention or regulatory decisions, people are still a little scared. So I think there is some shift towards China at this point of time, but I don't think uh, it's a fact yet. Okay, some shift towards China. Uh, let's talk about some pockets back home, right? Uh, consumption has come back in a big way. In autos, it's kind of a, a mixed bag because there are some pockets that are seeing a huge recovery. We were just reading about how TVS is uh, all set to become the number one electric vehicle two-wheeler player in India with the iCube. And then on the other hand, there are names like Tata Motors that are getting hit because of what's happening in China. Uh, how do you dis differentiate here and where are the pockets of strength according to you? So in, in consumption, actually, what has been happening in India, not just recently, but but over the last few years, is uh, bottom of the pyramid is actually struggling. And it's the middle of the pyramid or slightly upper end of the pyramid where consumption is uh, very, very strong. So which is why depending upon which set of data you're looking at, sometimes one is get one gets a very strong view of other consumption demand in India and sometimes a very weak view. Uh, just, to, just to give a... Uh, this actually one client pointed out in one of the one of the discussions. Last ten years, passenger vehicle volume growth in India is only two percent to three percent range. But that tells you that uh, very few new buyers are coming into the uh, car buying segment, right? Uh, whereas the industry uh, value growth is much higher because people are moving towards the bigger end, and uh, that's that's the current trend. So. Uh, uh, I don't think we can paint the whole consumption with one single brush. Uh, any 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 business catering to premiumization and formalization tends to grow a little faster than the overall industry growth. Uh, any any business catering more to mass is still uh, in a little bit of a struggle zone. Which are the sectors or themes you would avoid on the back of high valuations right now, Dheeraj? So a lot of consumer discretionary, we have got, I mean, buying one or two names, we have got sales on most. Uh, same with most FMCG. Uh, we, have a, we have a few buys, yes, but uh, even, even if you like those companies in terms of growth, in terms of uh, uh, longer term performance, but the valuations are a little bit steep and does not justify buying at the current prices. Uh, just yesterday, we initiated on uh, industrial automation. Uh, again, uh, while the demand is coming back and the growth rate in the next few years is going to look significantly better than the growth rate of, of the last decade. But between 60 times to 85 times uh, valuation still do not justify buying these names. Uh, and probably more than what is happening is built into the price. So uh, a large section of the market falls in a similar category where uh, the earnings performance or the company performance may be decent, but the valuations no longer justify buying them. Okay. Defense stocks have been the big wealth creators in the recent past, whether it's Bharat Dynamics, Bharat Electronics, Hindustan Aer Aeronautics. Uh, but these are companies that have already displayed their strength, right? Both in terms of earnings as well as the stock price. You think there's more to go in this space or has it been juiced out already? I, uh, we don't cover defense as a sector yet, so I'm a little out of depth there. I'll pass this question. Uh, Dheeraj, one theme which has emerged in the last uh, couple of months has been India's emerging as a very strong um, 
a factory for smartphone manufacturing, right? Apple now producing the latest iPhone models in India in the same year as China. That's gotten a lot of people excited. Uh, generally, can you tell us some themes which are emerging, which could be big plays in the next two to three years? Some ideas that you are exploring right now that investors are keen on? So, uh, in general, uh, two or three themes, which are structural themes for, for India, is uh, financialization, formalization, and digitization. Uh, and I think these themes continue. So, financialization basically means uh, I mean, more, more and more financial products adoption. In fact, uh, the rising uh, size of our mutual fund industry is a very clear demonstration of the financialization, which has been happening in the last seven, eight years, accelerated in the last two or three years. I think this continues. This would include insurance as well. Uh, second, uh, any segment or any business which benefits from informal getting formal. Uh, and there are a lot of examples, for example, Titan and jewelry segment, luggage, and many such examples where the, the market share is shifting from a large informal to a formal segment. Those businesses continue to grow. And digitization and the, and the collateral benefits out of that. I mean, those are broadly the big themes. Uh, what do you mention about manufacturing upswing in the electronic space? I mean, that's yes, uh, it is happening. Um, although I would say, I mean, we would say that uh, how much actually is, how much actually people backward integrate into building components is going to determine whether we become just an assembler or whether we become a real manufacturing hub. Uh, and, the, and the investments which happens in components and the and the inputs which goes into electronics is, I think, far more significant and far more important as compared to just manufacturing of the uh, end product itself. Nevertheless, it is it is a very welcome trend that investment is picking up, manufacturing is picking up, creates jobs and creates new business opportunities. And we have seen uh, a few listed stocks in that space doing quite well in the last two or three years. Okay, all right. Uh, we will leave it at that. Dheeraj, thanks a lot for joining in and have a great 2023. Happy New Year to you and your team. Uh, at Ambit and uh, you know we hope to see you again in the new year. Happy New Year to see and see your team too. All right, thanks a lot for that. Well, moving on, gold finances have been on our radar with the companies losing business to banks with gold prices now falling. We ask a key player what demand is looking like and their outlook for the business. VP Nandkumar, the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Manapuram Finance joins us now to talk about that. Uh, Mr. Nandkumar, good morning and thanks a lot for joining in. Uh, the tonnage, the gold tonnage has been on a declining trend for the last few quarters. In fact, even quarter on quarter, it's almost a 6-7% fall. Uh, do you see more pressure in the business in the, uh, you know, second half of the year? And by the end of the year, what could growth be? I can say, the, as a whole, the company is doing well. Because uh, we are a diversified company now. Your question about uh, gold finance, yes, uh, yeah, the, the bottom, the demand from the bottom of the pyramid is less. It is yet to pick up. So there is some degree of slowdown there. At the same time, uh, there is an issue with regard to LTV. Uh, the banks uh, have no LTV restriction, it is seen. And uh, the other regulated entity, NBFCs, have the uh, LTV restrictions every percent. I'm sure that the uh, regulator will look into this and address this issue. Mm -hmm. So the world finance uh, by, by NBOCs uh, will de definitely grow uh, uh, in the coming quarters. But the other businesses, uh, uh, as I mentioned, around 40% of our business today is on gold. All are doing well. As, as a whole, the company is doing well. Uh, so our uh, growth targets, etc., will be overall at the consolidated level will be achieved. Even uh, uh, when our target audience demand uh, is yet to pick up, and the level playing field is yet to come. So mm. when you say growth targets will be achieved, what are you looking at by the end of the year? So uh, the uh, our MSME is doing well. Uh, 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 affordable housing, uh, commercial vehicle finance, uh, microfinance, all these uh, 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 portfolios are doing exceedingly well. Uh, so uh, that uh, and gold also I mentioned uh, the slowly we see an improvement in the demand from the bottom of the pyramid. So the, all these will address our uh, the, uh, the issues of uh, growth and we'll be able to achieve the, uh, the targeted growth in the coming quarters. Mm. Uh, Mr. Nandakumar, morning. Just to deviate a bit from business, can you tell us what is the latest on succession planning? 
Are you evaluating any internal candidates or exploring some external candidates? And when should we hear from, uh, you know, in, with respect to a final decision? See, the succession planning is a part of our governance. So we cannot also deviate from that. We'll definitely identify the success, success, uh, not successor, not only for me, but at, at all levels uh, in the uh, coming quarters. Because uh, as it is a governance issue, we will address this issue very well. Who will be that is yet to be decided? The board will definitely look into the matter. Uh, so it is yet to be decided. What's the uh, timeline? Uh, Mr. Nandakumar, what's the timeline? When should we hear from you? Uh, uh, during the next one year, uh, yeah, the, there will be yeah, a, a, a few uh, changes, few announcements from our side with regard to succession. Uh, so the board is, uh, the, the, uh, the successor will be definitely, yes, uh, of a, uh, on the basis of a consensus by the stakeholders. So sure, uh, it will be announced in the next one year. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, got that. Uh, Mr. Nandukumar, uh, you know, uh, the, so we had, we spoke with the, the management of Muthur also uh, recently and uh, the, I think you also alluded to a large amount of competition from uh, banks who are now openly being aggressive, right, uh, in that space uh, because it's such a profitable uh, segment. Uh, we, uh, what will growth rates really uh, look like? If you can tell us, say, for example, in Q3, what was, what has customer addition been? In Q2, you saw a decline in customer additions sequentially. What is the, what is Q3 so far been? Just give us some numbers, sir. How, how are things progressing? You know, the, there is a progress, the exact number, I can disclose it now, but there is a, a good progress uh, with regard to customer addition. Really, the uh, lower end is picking up and uh, that will definitely uh, meet our requirement for go long growth also. Okay. Uh, just one final question from my end on the credit costs. Wanted to understand the non-gold AUM share I reckon will be increasing in your portfolio because of, you know, the fall that you've seen in the gold AUMs. Uh, can you tell us what is the outlook as far as the non-gold AUM credit cost is concerned? Uh, what can we expect over the next, say, 6 to 12 months? MSME, vertical finance, etc., affordable housing, etc., the... The NPA has come down to the uh, level which is in some of the segments. Uh, we are performing even better than the market. In microfinance, so whatever has to be addressed, uh, provided uh, these are provided from time to time. Uh, so the, there is uh, the, the, all these are going as per our expectation only. Nothing on an unexpected line. And the microfinance, uh, the, uh, we have uh, factored. The credit cost uh, that would be there in such a bad situation going forward also in the pricing. So, micro, uh, micro finance sector also is doing very well now. Okay, teaser yes. rates, sir. Would you look at uh, teaser rates to spruce up demand? We don't look at the teaser rate now. Okay. The teaser rate was when uh, the demand of, uh, from all the sectors were less. And now that uh, the situation uh, is over now, so we don't offer in teaser rate now. We go for the regular rate. Hmm. Uh, so the teaser rates is broadly out of the system, or are competitors offering teaser rates now? Oh, to, most of the NBFCs are not offering, uh, okay. barring one uh, or two maybe that are, they will also come come to the line very soon. Okay. All right, fair enough. Mr. Nandakumar, thank you very much. Good speaking with you. Appreciate you joining in uh, with that. We'll connect with the management of uh, Jindal Steel and Power to discuss the acquisition of Monet Spar's Angul plant. Later uh, on the show, we uh, speak with Siddharth Mishra of Bharat Dynamics. Uh, that's going to be an interesting conversation on uh, their business outlook. Uh, so uh, those two conversations coming up in just a bit. Markets doing absolutely fine. Uh, the Nifty is up uh, 90 points now. We are basically at the day's highest point uh, on the index. Stay with us.